Buckling is a classical phenomenon uh, in mechanics. Um, for example, considering a slender object as this card, when there is uh, compression being applied, the, the card buckles it, meaning that it bends and it deforms out of plane. This has been long studied in mechanics because there are some catastrophic consequences of buckling in many structures, as uh, for example in bridges or in marine vessels. So usually buckling has been studied in order to prevent from it happening. However, in modern science, uh, buckling has been also appreciated for being a route to implement functionality uh, in some engineering structures. The important thing of uh, buckling is that it happens in slender objects like this one, in which there is a dimension of the object that it's much smaller than the other dimensions. In this case, it's the thickness that it's very small compared as to the width and the length of the card. So buckling is, is usually associated with compression, but there are other routes to create buckling. For example, nowadays there has been examples of buckling under tension. And in order to bring a, an example of buckling under tension, I will use this paper sheet, just a regular one, and I uh, apply some tension, nothing happens. When I apply compression, it buckles. But if I crumple the sheet, and then open it again. I will clamp the center of the short edge and I will apply a tension, a uniaxial tension. The sheet falls into the transverse direction of the axis in which I'm applying the tension. And we have showed in our study that, that this is a buckling uh, instability. So we, we solve for the planar stresses of the sheet when a tension has been applied. So the, the sheet starts being flat. Uh, it can withstand some stretching until a certain critical value of the strain I'm imposing. And then it eventually it, it falls in the transverse direction. So the mechanism that explains uh, this uh, is that the tension I'm applying, it's been converted into a compression along the transverse direction. That's what we mathematically saw by solving the equations, the mechanical equilibrium of the sheet. So in order to better understand what happens, we can uh, use this sample, which is uh, elastomer-made material uh, in two colors, so it's a rectangular sheet as well. It's thin on one dimension. Um, and then the bit that it's pink in the middle, it's softer and it's stiffer at the sides in green. So then when I apply a tension, we observe the same phenomenon of folding in the transverse direction. And what is important to notice is that the bit in the middle, it develops a non-zero Gaussian curvature. Like the way the sheet finds in order to minimize the energy, it's to stretch even more than the stretch I'm imposing in the soft part, and then remain the bits that are stiffer in, in green flat. As if I consider the opposite configuration, so it's stiffer in the middle, softer at the sides, and I apply exactly the same tension, the sheet it doesn't uh, fold. And this supports the idea that in order to observe folding, we need to create a double uh, curvature around the center. And because this sheet is stiffer in the middle, it's very hard to stretch. So it's very hard for it to adopt this configuration. And instead of folding, it uh, prefers to uh, be a stretch all along the width. What our study shows, it's a way to rationalize some designs, uh, um, some engineering designs. Uh, for example, there are these kirigami uh, grippers. So it's exactly a sheet with some cuts and then they, they exploited this design in order to create a gripper. So when applying longitudinal tension, it falls along the transverse direction. And with this functionality, this can be used to grip some objects. A different version of our problem consists of, instead of applying a point-like tension, clamping over the full width and applying a tension. In this case, instead of observing the folding, we observe wrinkles emerging in the transverse direction to the tension that has been applied. The scaling of the wavelength of the wrinkles that emerge is exactly the same as the width uh, of the doubly curved region in the, in the case in which we apply a localized tension. In the case in which the, the tension is applied uh, locally, um, the, the critical value for the strain in order to observe the 
mechanical instability, it's much lower than in, in the other case. So this goes to show that uh, this is a geometrical effect that uh, uh, by applying a, local, uh, a localized or a point-like tension um, converts the tension into a compression very efficiently. So this case study has uh, lots of application and we speculate that this phenomenon can be, for example, the route uh, for invagination in embryogenesis, for understanding the bending of graphene when one side is clamped, and also the folding of leaves as senescence progresses.